One of the most important jobs of a stage manager is making the rehearsal room as real as possible for the actors, and taping out the ground plan is one of the most helpful tools to do just that. My name is Kent, and this is your Half Hour Call. Attention cast and crew, this is your Half Hour Call. Half hour to the top of the show. Half hour. What is up, friends? We are finally back with another episode of the Almost Complete Guide to Stage Management. We are finally getting around to talking about taping out of space because I was finally able to get footage of doing just that. So let's break down everything you need to know to get started taping out a ground plan in a rehearsal room. But if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Kent and you are watching Half Hour Call. So if you want how-to videos, interviews with industry leaders, and insider theater updates, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video. But first things first, what does it mean to tape out a space and why do we do it? Basically, taping out a space is creating a one-to-one -one scale drawing of the ground plan of the set for the show on the floor of the rehearsal room. This includes things like the dimensions of the stage itself, walls, doors, stairs, placement of furniture, windows, platforms, and other elevation changes, and even things like trap doors and automation changes. Anything that could impact the action of the scene gets taped out. Since the majority of professional productions don't rehearse inside a theater itself and just in a rehearsal room or studio, this allows the director and the actors to visualize the set before it's built and make sure that the blocking and the stage business work within the constraints of the design. Taping out a space has three stages, planning, plotting, and placement. The planning stage is perhaps the most important. It's where you set yourself and your team up for success and make sure that there's a clear trajectory for the project. This really isn't something you want to try and do on the fly or wing. You will just waste time and a lot of tape. First, let's gather our supplies. You'll need an architect scale rule, not an engineer's scale rule. Those are two different things. You'll ideally need two flexible tape measures. These are usually about 100 feet long, and you want one with the little ring on the end so you can keep it in one place. You'll need some regular tape measures, cloth spike tape, and vinyl marley tape. This should all be supplied by the theater company, but in case you are tasked with ordering them on behalf of the company or just want to see what they look like so you know what to look for, there are links in the description below. Next, you will need a to-scale ground plan of the set, a physical copy too. This will need to be provided by either the production manager or the scenic designer, but start with the production manager since they're more likely to physically be on site at a theater than the designer who might be working remotely. And finally, you will need the dimensions of your rehearsal space that you'll be using. This is very important important for the planning stage in particular. Now let's get into making the actual plan. We need to figure out how to best lay out the rehearsal room to fit as much of the set in as possible while still leaving room for the director, choreographer, stage managers, and understudies if you have them. If you're working at a regional theater, then they will often use the same rehearsal space for the same venue and may have some sort of established system for setting up the rehearsal room. For example, the theater I worked at most recently had a slightly elevated platform that were the exact dimensions dimensions of the stage and physical walls that formed the proscenium. Odds are good that your room will not be able to fit everything in it, and that is okay, and unfortunately, very common. That just means we need to ask ourselves some more questions. Where is the majority of the action of the show taking place? What will affect the movement of the actors? And what will be the most helpful for the directors and actors during the process? Generally, you want to preserve the most playing space you can, so the director can start working with stage pictures. Things like escape stairs, space upstage of major scenic pieces or areas where the actors can't or won't actually be performing are the first on the chopping block for me. Just make sure you leave some room in the wings for prop tables and a crossover behind the set if it's needed. Now that we know the general layout of how the ground plan will fit in the rehearsal space, it's time to start taking some measurements. There are basically only two options when it comes to measuring methods and we'll get into those in a second, but first we need to figure out what we are measuring. I like to use erasable pens for this next part because they're colorful and, crucially, erasable for when you inevitably make a mistake on your only copy of the ground plan. So take your erasable pen or pencil and make a dot on every point, every corner, every place where two lines intersect, anything that isn't the middle of a straight line. So your ground plan should go from looking like this to looking something like this. Then label those dots in some kind of organized fashion. I like to label them with letters going from downstage to upstage and stage right to stage left. These are the points that we will measure, but how will we measure them? Well, first check out this video about how to read a scale ruler and then come back and watch the rest of this one. Did you do it? You sure? Great. 
Now let's talk about the two main methods for measuring your points for a tape out. They are the up and over method and the triangulation method. For up and over, you are basically plotting points on a coordinate grid like you did in algebra in high school. So if you imagine the center line is the Y axis and your downstage edge is your X axis, you can see how you could easily find the coordinates for any point on the ground plan. The major difference from your middle school math classes is that you generally want to do your upstage measurement followed by your left or right. So your Y measurement for your X measurement. This is because generally you will use the center line to line everything up correctly. This method is pretty simple. Ideally, you'll have two or three people to accomplish this, but if absolutely necessary, you can get away with only one. It'll be really tough and frustrating and make you want to die, but it's possible. The primary downside is that it can rely pretty heavily on your ability to visually estimate right angles if you don't have a large enough team to help you out. If your rehearsal space happens to be tiled or wood paneled or anything other than a blank Marley dance floor that will help you line up these right angles, this is a pretty solid method to pick. So basically you'll create a table or draw right on the ground plan, the two measurements up and over for each point. Triangulation on the other hand is a bit more complicated conceptually, but has the potential to make measuring significantly faster. Basically, the principle behind triangulation is that only one triangle can be made with any three given side lengths. So if you know all three side lengths and the location of two of the points, you know where the third point of the triangle goes. There's a lot of geometry and proofs that can go into proving why this works, but the short answer is that it just does. It's easier to visualize than it is to explain. The concept is that you pick two points, and these can be literally any two points that you want, to measure everything else based off of. I like to use different colors for each point, so let's call them red point and blue point. Then, instead of measuring the upstage distance or the stage left or right distance, you simply measure the distance from your desired point to your red point and the distance from your desired point to your blue point. Then later you set up tape measures starting at the red and blue points and figure out where those two measurements meet and that's your point. Now, because of the red and blue point are what everything else is based on, generally you will want to pick something that is very easy to measure. You can even use the center line for this too, with the downstage edge being one point and the upstage wall being the second. You'll just have to remember that you will have two sets of numbers, one that's measuring the triangles that are stage left and one measuring the triangles that are stage right. Whatever you pick, make sure you know exactly how you are going to position those two points in the rehearsal room. Now, there are downsides to this measurement style as well. It pretty much requires at least two people, one for each measuring tape. It can also also increase your margin of error since the measurements are less intuitive, but if you're taping out a massive Marley studio with no real ability to keep your angles at perfect 90 degrees, this method may save you headache later. Regardless of what method you pick, measure carefully and you'll end up with a bunch of points and two measurements associated with each of them. Which means now it is time to actually place the tape in the rehearsal studio. Before you begin, there are two things you need to know. Number one, wear knee pads. I cannot tell you how many experienced stage managers I've spoken to who've said they wished they wore knee pads while taping out when they were younger. And number two, have a game plan for how you're going to place these points. If you've labeled points with letters, I'm a fan of placing all the points and connecting the dots later. Pro tip, it's a lot faster if you pre-cut and pre-label the little pieces of spike tape that you're gonna use to put at each point. It's very important that you label them or you will just end up with a bunch of dots on the ground and it will take much longer to figure out how to connect them later. Alternately, if you just wrote the measurements right on the ground plan, you can also finish one element like a platform or uh, the front of the house or something and then immediately connect the dots. This will keep you from getting confused as you progress through the points. Either way works, just make sure that everyone is on the same page before you begin. Both up and over and triangulation require specificity and consistency, but they both have slightly different things to consider. For up and over, tape down your center line. Make sure this isn't going to move until you are completely done because this is what everything else is based off of. Then you're going to start from downstage to upstage or vice versa. One person holds the zero end of a tape measure. They place that tape measure on the up measurement of the center line. The second person goes out to the over measurement and after making sure they're at a 90 degree angle with the center line, places a small piece of spike tape on the point. It's important that you communicate and are on the same page about which edge of the tape measure you're using. Generally, I like to use the downstage edge so that the tape measure sits upstage of the up measurement. Then you place the piece of spike tape on the downstage edge of the tape. It doesn't actually matter which one you do 
do as long as you and everyone on your team stay consistent throughout the process. Triangulation, on the other hand, is a bit different. Step one is to measure out your red and blue points. Do this meticulously as everything else is based off of these two points. Next, if you have less than four people on your team, find something like a chair or a mic stand or anything that is similarly pole-like and can be weighed down. Place these items on your red and blue points so that they secure that ring at the zero end of your cloth tape measure and allow it to pivot freely around that red or blue point. Make sure that these pivot points are secure and spiked to oblivion so that you know exactly where they need to go in case they get moved, because you do not want to lose track of where these two points are during your measurement. Spend extra time double checking these two points. I cannot stress that enough. Then one person is in charge of the red length while the other person is in charge of the blue length. Each measure their length for a given point and then you place a small piece of spike tape where those two measurements form a triangle. Like the up and over method, make sure you're placing the piece of tape at a consistent point in that intersection. Personally, I like directly under where the two measuring tapes meet. Once you've plotted all the points, connect the dots with cloth spike tape and then use Marley tape to secure down important parts of your tape out. Personally, I cover all corners with Marley tape as well as high traffic areas like doorways. Marley tape is the most expensive of the tapes. So depending on your theater's budget, you may need to use this sparingly and prioritize where you put it. There are a few special considerations to keep in mind when making your game plan that will impact your tape out significantly. If there are any changes or automation in your show, how will these be marked? Often it's a good idea to use different colors to indicate different scenes. However, this can get confusing very quickly. So make sure you're only taping out things that are actually helpful. Similarly, if there is a second floor, it may be helpful to offset the second level from where it actually would exist in the space. So that way you can have actors in both the first and second floor at the same time. This will depend on the layout of your specific set and the action that's planned, but something to think about. And don't be afraid to think outside the box. If you're pressed for time or team members, make sure you are working smarter and not harder. Prioritize what will actually impact rehearsal. Do you need every single stair measured perfectly? Probably not, unless you're doing 42nd Street where you're tap dancing on the staircase. Do you actually need the escape stairs or the multiple panels of scenery upstage that aren't actually in the playing space? When in doubt, ask the director if they envision that area or element being important to the blocking. Specifically for musicals, it is standard practice to include a dance line on the downstage edge of the stage and maybe another one upstage as well. A dance line is based basically a number line that is used to mark out feet to the left and right of center. Choreographers and dancers use this to make sure that their spacing remains consistent and looks good every time. You'll generally only want to mark out even numbers, so center, two feet, four feet, six feet, and so on, all the way to the proscenium. You can either use gaff tape and a permanent marker to make the numbers, or you can print out the numbers and use Marley tape to secure them to the floor. If you're on a stage with a curved apron, be careful to measure out the feet from center and not the feet along the curve, because the farther out you go along the curve, the more compressed the numbers will get and the dancers won't be evenly spaced. And finally, make sure that you remember the method that you used to measure this dance line, because you will need to recreate it exactly when you move into the theater and put the dance line on the stage. And remember, tape is just one tool in your tool belt to make the rehearsal room as real as possible. And frankly, it's often the least helpful element for the actors. Anytime that you are able to make something more physical or three-dimensional, do it. You can use costume racks, often called Z racks, to indicate flats or moving scenery pieces. You can use music stands to indicate doorways or other obstructions. Ask your scene shop what rehearsal scenery they're able to provide, and you may be surprised what they already have in stock. Taping out is one of the biggest jobs the stage management team has during prep week and is a great chance to have an early success as a team. And it will be a success as long as you make a solid plan and communicate with your team. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. My name is Kent, and this has been your Half Hour Call. Find the perfect gift for the stage manager in your life at the Half Hour Call store. Now with free shipping on all domestic orders. New products added frequently. Visit kentjamescollins.com store to shop now.